What up, Chiefs Kingdom, and welcome to the Arrowhead Kingdom Chiefs Cast Show. Big reminder that all Chiefs fans are invited to join us for game day. Visit arrowheadkingdom.org to learn about the group and to find your local chapter. Also, please make sure to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. We're, of course, presented by Complete Weddings and Events, your leading provider, photo, video, DJ, photo booth, lighting, and day of coordination services. Visit them at completewedo.com. All right, guys, week one is in the books. Yeah. Is uh interesting. It's yeah, always, it was, always, what, always the most interesting week of the season. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, wow. very much so. Just it, it was it was crazy. But I tell you what, for the first week, I'm in the I'm 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 smoking on a Rocky Patel and in the honor of Pat Mahomes Senior, I'm smoking on that Joe Burrow. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> what were you gonna say? Joe Brian? Burrow was held to 87, 82 yards. 82 yards. And 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 Orlando Brown couldn't block him for nothing. Yeah. Man, that deserves yeah. another pup. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I wish I shared your enthusiasm. I do on some level. Joe Burrow is my quarterback in fantasy football, and he was oh, around for three points. Awesome. A solid three points. Dude. But yeah, no, it was I I, I was uh, I texted the uh the uh, the uh, football fan uh, fantasy football group i go are there any like fantasy points for like if you sign the biggest contract in nfl history and <laughs> don't do anything like is there like anything for that and this is all met with like no please stop texting us this stuff stupid stuff so yeah <laughs> that's awesome no he had a uh he, the only reason you got those three points is he didn't manage to throw an interception or fumble the ball because that would have equated to doing something <laughs> they didn't do anything yes it would have <laughs> Yeah, he didn't do anything. No, Burrow, Burrow was bad. Burrow was bad. And and there was all kinds of talk about the Browns kind of having their numbers and stuff, but that was bad. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But you know, I, I do I respect respect the, the, the stogie there, Dwayne, because I remind I remember the Burrow head comments and that still does That's ring right. my head a little bit. I remember that. All right. That's right. So Dwayne, we're smoking on the Joe Burrow tonight. There you go. Brian, okay, I right. remember in college when we did the uh, cigar series of pictures? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think, yeah, so I remember that. Brian and I just went around and we tried to think of the most random things that we could do by taking our shirts off and smoking a cigar and wearing aviator sunglasses. It was all three of those things. So we, we got photos of ourselves mowing the lawn. We, we should do that again. Yeah, I, I, I like going it. in on that one. I should create those. How yeah, I was washing my car with that thing that shoots the water. <laughs> it's like we're stoking yeah. around like we're washing the car. And I, I, mow, mowing the lawn was my favorite. I like that one. I weighed about a hundred thousand pounds less than I do now. Uh yeah, <laughs> so, me too. Yeah. <laughs> but that's yeah. always good to show off that weight loss, but you just don't want to show that flag, you know. But hey, <laughs> well, here's a, here's for the, the, the picture's sake, I'll do it. I'll, you know I'll what? do the dad bot. I'll do the dad bot. That, that makes it funnier. But you're right. It yeah, makes right. it funnier if I just do that. Yeah. All right. Cool. So uh, we're apparently on the hook for this now. That's uh, yeah, not what I happen. planned on doing tonight. But anyway. Uh, okay. So first first point, um, we're going to get into the rest of the uh, NFL, you know, first week and including the Chiefs game here soon. But I think we got to start with Aaron Rodgers. I am. Uh, I'm, I'm just genuinely starting to believe that this whole idea of. Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes playing each other in a game. There's got to be some kind of situation where it's going to make the world implode because this this matchup is cursed. It just keeps not happening. It is very cursed, isn't it? Yeah. I I was looking for look. I my wife and I we've been a loyal viewers of Hard Knocks this season. You better believe I was so excited to see the narrative, the storyline that is the Jets. I was really excited to see it in five snaps or four snaps, whatever it is, or five snaps if you count the tendon. Four snaps into the game, and they were <laughs> Brian. <laughs> I love it, Brian. They were, like, I was so excited, and then they show the highlight reel, like Aaron Rodgers, the Jets, and just him, like, running out the American flag. <laughs> it's like, that's it. But, yeah, I don't know. If, if blue balls is a thing, like – for football fans, that was what that was. I was so excited to see what was going to happen there. And, uh, you know, I tip of the hat for the Jets getting it done against the Bills uh, afterwards. But that was an exciting game to watch. But I really wanted to see how that played out. And here we are. Yeah, I mean, it looks like Zach Wilson's going to be the starter for the rest of the season, mainly because I don't think they have anybody to trade for. All oh. the All the talking heads on TV were throwing out ideas like Jameis Winston, Matthew Stafford came up. 
Um, I saw Colin the, Kaepernick was uh, the agent. Oh, Kaepernick's agent Kaepernick, is Kaepernick, called. Yeah. Who's the Cooper Rush in Dallas is another name that came up. There's yeah. a, a talk about calling the Matt Ryans, a Carson Wentz. Uh, Tom Brady, I'm sure, got a phone call. He's not playing. Especially not behind that Swiss cheese offensive line. No, not at all. Yeah, so I really, really hope Aaron Rodgers rehabs himself back to play one more year because that can't be the lasting memory of that guy. That that would just be too unfortunate. I don't know. I don't know, Josh. I, I think that he was already contemplating retirement. Well, he said he was so, before he went there. <laughs> before he went there, yeah, and he was talking about being the next host of Jeopardy. I don't know. Maybe he rides out into the sunset after this season. It's real hard to rehab. Uh, a ruptured Achilles at 40 years old. I, if he was 30, I'd be like, oh, yeah, it's a no brainer. It's a bounce back. My understanding is it's hard to uh, rehab that at any age, but yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, we'll see what happens. But I think, I, I think I agree with Dwayne there. And uh, we'll see what happens. Like, I, I'm no, not a doctor. This is not a doctor advice here, nor do I know right. how Achilles heels <laughs> tendons, uh, you know, uh, heal when you're that age. But, uh, but, you know, as uh, you know, we all know the competitor that he is, and I'm sure he's with the same mindset that that can't be that can't be it. That's it. I mean, that's how we're going out. Like, I don't have something, some sort of uh, storyline to go up, throw uh, throw there. So, I, you know, I think I predict that uh, depending, obviously, how it heals out. But I know he wants to do it. I can't imagine him not wanting to do it. So, uh, you know, what? I'm going to I'm gonna put my hat on the corner of like, he's going to be back. We're going to see one more year of him and uh, we'll see what happens. That's my prediction. That's where I'm at, too. That's where I'm at, too. All right, let's get into the Chiefs business. The biggest piece of Chiefs business that happened after this first game, uh, Chris Jones. The situation we've been talking, we just wanted resolution. Maybe that's just me projecting that on everybody else at this point. But Chris Jones signed a deal. Technically, it's uh, a new signing because they added the incentives. Um, so we've seen all the numbers. And effectively, if he hits all of his playing time, if he hits all of his incentives, he can make up to 252 you know, effectively a million. Oh, and, I got the, and, I got the incentives right here, by the way. Do, do, yeah. yeah let's, line, let's, line, let's go line itemed out here. All right. Okay. Perfect. 1 million bucks for 25% of the snaps played another million for 50% of the snaps played performance 1.25 million for 10 sacks, another half million for 15 sacks and team and personal awards. 1 million for first team, all pro and super bowl appearance. And two million for defensive player of the year. Okay, wow, and Super Bowl win. So all that together, he gets twenty five million dollars. Yeah. Um, so there it is. Um, I guess he was holding out for more incentives and more bonuses. Uh, just pay me for what I produce. You, I guess you, you you know Brian, I have to it, like. Does it feel like in, in you know Chiefs Kingdom? You guys can agree with me or disagree with me, but doesn't it feel like he got fleeced a little? Like. Um, the Cats brothers, I mean, all of that drama for that. I, I believe that if he was shown up at training camp, he could have got that deal, you know? Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. Yeah, I look at this, I'm like, it's performance-based. Like, those two, uh, those two looking dudes who look like John Taffer from, uh, Bar Rescue. Like, I, by the way, I didn't know who, I, obviously, I don't know the business side of the NFL. And remember, I was watching Pat McAfee and he was talking about those two guys. He's like, there he is right there. Bad optics. Those two guys. I respect those guys. I respect those guys. I'm like, what the hell are those guys doing? Like to make you stop your language right there to make you like, I need to make sure that they're cool. But, but yeah, uh, for what, what he's getting here, I don't know what his deal was before. I mean, if he just wants performance-based deals like this, like, okay, go get it. If that's get, if, uh, if that's what you want to make happen, it's like a, any one of us office workers is like a bonus for performance. So, um, but I feel like I agree with you, Dwayne. It's like, I mean, I feel like you should have gotten this in the, in the earlier stages of stuff. Yeah, it, it, it just seems like he got fleeced a little bit. I don't I don't know. I'm not seeing I mean, any. I, I don't see the words guaranteed here at all. No. And I'm like, okay, Cats Brothers, you did all of this drama. And Chris, you went along with this. And I mean, I like Chris Jones. I like him as a as a guy. But I just, I don't think he's, I don't think he's quite the chess player. Can I say that? You know? <laughs> well, so, I, 
I, I, I go go for it, Brian, because I, I actually have kind of a soliloquy on this one. <laughs> okay, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say after watching the game that we saw against Detroit, I felt the presence lost of Kelsey. Didn't really feel the presence lost of Jones as much. So, I mean, if that means anything to anybody, but I mean, Kelsey was a felt a presence that was not quite there. The old reliable, you know, he was catching. He does what he does. Uh, seems like our uh, defensive line was uh, obviously there. The there was mistakes made there, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, the presence, it was just, I don't know. It didn't feel like uh, that was as much loss. I didn't feel that vibe as much. So I, I'm going to start by saying this. So I look at the entire situation. I see three positives. I see one negative. And I'm going to get into the meat of what I really think about this entire situation. So the first positive, he's back on the field. The second positive, they did not write into this deal that he cannot be franchise tagged because that that was a possibility. So when news first broke that he signed and came back, there was speculation that part of this deal of bringing him out of the holdout was that the Chiefs uh, would agree in writing to not put the franchise tag on him. That didn't happen. So that's second win, which really just means that the Chiefs and Veach have all the control here. Yes. And so I think there's a possibility for a path forward. And I'm going to get into that a little bit more later. So the biggest negative is exactly what you guys are saying. Chris Jones opportunity cost. He cost himself all the fines. He cost himself $1.08 million for a game check to effectively get nothing more than, you know, some in- incentives up front. He, he, he didn't prove any points and that's really it. And so, I, I, I had a bunch of uh, back and forth, you know, with people online and on the phone and stuff about him sitting in that suite for the game. And so mm. I think something just really clicked with me on this and it's going to play off of what you said. He's, he's not good at playing the chess. And so I, I just think more than anything that illustrated to me that accompanied by the little quick interview that he had outside of the uh, McDonald's place <laughs> where, where he got up and talked. So right. what I know is that he was, uh, he was coached up on what to say. And I would right. bet about every dollar that I have that he was not told to say something to the effect of, you know, everybody has opinions and they're like buttholes, you know, they, yeah. they think or something. So it, it clicked with me. That guy's just not buttoned up at all. He I don't think zero, so at all. He has zero PR. He, he has none. He has absolutely none. And and so the whole situation just made sense. So his brain, and I, and I will die believing this, his brain was poisoned by the, the NFLPA telling him, you are supposed to reset the market. You're right. a two-time Super Bowl winner. You're an all-pro. You're supposed to reset the market. His agents ran that playbook. The only thing they maybe didn't run was his social media presence, but they might've been telling him to sit in Miami and post pictures of himself, smoking cigars and pools. I don't know that. That's the one, that's the one thing that the one dart that I'll actually throw at Chris Jones, aside from just not having the PR ability, but here's the thing that I just consider a fact honor. You see a lot of uh, fans going, well, he needs to honor this contract. Okay. Honor and NFL contracts aren't a thing. That's not a thing. That's not a thing at all. Sports in general view and operate where the final year of a contract is a vote of no confidence unless you're Tom Brady and you're 45. You're either playing out because you're going to retire. Or that's a vote of no confidence. So having a one-year deal means you don't have a contract. Okay. Right. And then when you look at it in, in an NBA standpoint, that's the expiring contract and teams that are trying to tank to bring in big free agents, try to pick up as many expiring contracts as they can get. In international soccer, if you're on that last thing, you have to get transferred before the uh, summer deadline. My guy, Harry Kane, that I was talking about, that's that's what that is. The second you enter the last year of your deal, you no longer have value in a, in a transfer market. And leaving as a free transfer means you either suck or the club didn't run things well. So there's that. In the NFL, there's nothing guaranteed. I- anything that's not guaranteed isn't really a contract. That's, that's what I'm really trying to say. <laughs> and there's a website that covers the NFL called overthecap.com and it is dedicated to the benefits that teams get by cutting players before their deals up for the non-guaranteed money. So it's impossible to sit there and say that this is just a simple black and white on your contract. That's, that's not the thing. We can't expect players words to hold a different standard than a team's word. So Jones did nothing wrong sitting out. 
No. That interview that he did, he's not buttoned up. He's got a lack of sophistication. He is a liability on camera, which goes oh. back to my whole thing. Like Mahomes and Kelsey were able to fight the NFLPA and tell their agents we're taking less money because we want to do this because they walk out of the football gridiron into a studio and make $10 million tomorrow doing yeah. whatever they decide to do. Jones is not going to do that. He, he, proved no, that. he proved that with that press conference. And so when I'm looking at just the people in this situation, Jones isn't a villain at all in my mind. And he, no, might be, not at all. he might be a victim. The NFLPA is not really victims or villains per se. They're, they're lobbyists. You know, one of my favorite quotes, it, it's John F. Kennedy. And he, he says something to the effect of every mother wants her son to grow up to be president, but none of them want their son to grow up to be a politician. And that's the NFLPA in this situation. They're lobbyists. Of course, they're trying to drive salaries up. They're trying to build that up. <laughs> so now we get into the hat, the Katz brothers. These guys are either villains or clowns. And there's no, the, the, it, it might be a combination of the two, but those two ran the playbook on this entire thing. They ran the playbook on the entire thing. They ran out the coverage on his, his leverage. And Veach, to his credit was the cool and steady hand in all of this as soon as the deal got done he said all the right things he said hey i congratulate you know chris for getting back we have a lot of respect i think the cat brother cats brothers he talked like this is a long-term thing that he's looking at and then the chief's front office the coaches and the players are all good teammates about all of this and so prior to the contract i i truly believe that jones was letting the cats brothers put him at an extreme risk because if he sat yes. there and lost that 1.08 million dollar game check every week he was also taking his potential um franchise tag dollar amount down and so if if they decided to let this thing get ugly and he he uh, held out until the eighth uh week like he threatened to do the number that i heard was that his franchise tag number would be 12 million Right. And so if the Chiefs decided they wanted to be nasty because he was being nasty through, you know, his agents being nasty, they could have tagged him for 12 million and said, we're not trading you play on this or don't. And that effectively kills his career. So that was a situation that his agents were walking him down. So thankfully, we didn't get to that situation and no. we didn't force another holdout. So where I think we're at right now is I think Jones finally is the one that broke this situation. This is just my gut feeling. And he finally just told his agents, look, get me back out on the field, get as much money as you possibly can. And let's get this done. So they took the one year incentive relative situation. And I think that that was just Chris Jones throwing his uh, hands up. So the thing that I want to ask you guys after I get off my soapbox here. So looking forward, now that we have the new deal, I'm thinking these next two weeks are going to be uh, really important and so maybe Dwayne you can answer this question how long does it take to replace an agent because what I think the best indication that we can get from a Chiefs fan standpoint is if Chris Jones fires the Cats brothers here within these next two weeks if he can find a new agent in that period of time I truly believe an extension with the Chiefs is back on the table if he doesn't I think that we're looking at another one of these situations but I, I'm just thinking if if I'm Chris Jones where I'm at right now is I don't want to get franchise tagged. I don't want to do this again. I want this to be clear. And the two yahoos that I had running my business, you know, this season, this off season, didn't get it done. So I need to find somebody else. So Dwayne, that's the first question. Then I want to get both of your comments on that. And I took up quite a bit of time there. <laughs> well, that no, that's, that's fine. Actually, he could fire the Cats brothers tomorrow and he can hire an agent that next, I mean, within the next hour, like there's no waiting period to hire a new agent with, with the NFL uh, agents. But the thing is, the Chiefs have already got him on the dotted line for the contract this year. So I don't even know if a new agent would actually benefit him. He could do that, but they have to basically play that out and go back to the table at the end of the season during the postseason. But a new agent would take him and say, sure, give me, give me, come on, Chris. Yeah, we got you. We'll fix this. Don't worry about it. Just play this contract out because going into the off season, you want to have a new agent before the uh, sign of the franchise tag, right? And they usually franchise tag you after their season is done, which for us, it's a postseason thing. So you know, we're, we're, we're an AFC championship team, whether we win it or lose it this year, 
we are the team that's going to get there. But um, as, as far as that, if he decided to get rid of the Cats brothers and get him a new agent, then I'll go back to the table. But my gut feeling, Josh, I don't think he's going to fire him. I don't think he's savvy enough to fire him. I think he trusts these guys. These guys have basically said a lot of things to him, and I don't know if they babied him or I don't know if they pampered him. They did a great mind job on on Chris Jones, and mm -hmm. I don't think there was a hard mind job to do. I, I think that the Cats brothers wouldn't have represented Pat Mahomes. They wouldn't have represented Travis Kelsey, but they found him one, and it's kind of like, what my grandmother used to say, and, and I'm not by no means uh, Chiefs Kingdom, am I calling Chris Jones a sucker? But when I when I when I say this, they say when you find a sucker, go ahead and enjoy that lollipop. Is what they is what the old people would say, and so that was said to say, hey, they found him somebody that will buy it, and that will buy into it, and Chris doesn't realize the position he put himself in because now he has to stay healthy. And if Chris doesn't stay healthy, this is going to be all bad. And looking at Beach's pattern and Chris Jones' age is 29. He'll be 30 in July of 2024. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't get franchise tag. I mean, with all the hoopla that went on at the beginning of the season, I, it wouldn't shock me if they just – part ways with him. and the Cats brothers sell him on oh don't worry we're going to get you a better deal that's what we wanted we wanted them to part ways you know especially especially if he wins the Super Bowl if we win the Super Bowl yeah. a back-to-back -back Super Bowl I could see Beach saying no need to tag we're just going to let him go we've gotten two Super Bowls back-to-back -back, so we can just go with what we got if we don't make it a third time no biggie because you just won two Super Bowls, you know? So, I, I don't know. Brian, what do you think? All right, so my thought process is I don't know what Chris Jones's motivation is. Is it money? Is it the Super Bowl? Does he want rings? My heart thinks that he, maybe he was like, look, I want, I want, I want to get paid better, okay? I want to be paid based on my performance. I want to be paid what my output is, but I want to be on the team that has a, a be the better chance of going to the Super Bowl and getting and getting in there and, and, and getting more championships. Uh, that's how I imagine how I think like elite level athletes like this think is like they want to win the big one. They always want to win the big one. And right. now if he gets if he gets that big paycheck for the Bears or from whoever has the he he knows oh I'm gonna get paid. Probably not going to the Super Bowl though. So where does that lay in the the from the teeter totter? That is like what does he value? Where does his value lay at? Does I think his value is in money because Brian. Like Josh so eloquently put put it, he's not buttoned up enough to really make it uh, on TV outside of football. He's a diehard football player. He is an, an incredible talent on the field. I mean, nothing against his game. Uh, but I just don't think that he has, he has that opportunity that Kelsey and Mahomes have. Kelsey will be retired in the next two years. And Kelsey is probably going to be all over TV. I look for Kelsey to be on Good Morning America. You know? Hell, his podcast probably makes more money than Good Morning America with his brother. <laughs> That's going to yeah. be. Well, is that, a... Either that or he's the next John Cena. I mean, I could see him trying or, to go the Hollywood route. Maybe Taylor Swift. Maybe he'll marry Taylor Swift and get Taylor Swift money. I don't know. <laughs> So, uh, what? Yeah, <laughs> what, what, yeah, Travis that's right. Kelsey, he did, he Travis did say Kelsey he had a be, thing for Taylor, huh? Watch yeah. Travis Kelsey be the one, the guy that actually sticks with her. Oh how, my gosh, how entertaining would that? That, be? that would be hilarious. That'd He's be been wild. through everyone. Or, he he had a dating show sideshow, and it, it, those two end up together. That'd be hilarious. Or she that writes a song hilarious. that's really hilarious about him too. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? We'll see and what actually, I agree with you guys. I think he can take the John Cena route and go into Hollywood. I think he can be trained to be a really good actor because I liked I liked him on uh, I liked his delivery on Saturday Night Live that's and really, I saw yeah. something with that. Well, and, and that's it. And, and what that comes down to to give you my answer to that question: if he's uh, driven by money or by winning, Kelsey's driven by winning. 
Mahomes is driven by winning. Those two know how to capitalize on that with their their next career. Chris Jones doesn't. You know, no. he he's going to have no value being introduced um, as a three time Super Bowl winner. Well, this is my pitch to Chris Jones. Rest of his my, life. My pitch to Chris Jones is: What if I told you we can make a software that makes like what rental properties more easy to navigate? No, I'm not going to pitch my software ideas to him right now. But no, yeah, uh, yeah. just yeah. you know what? That would be a good pitch for him. Yeah, he he might say, "Oh yeah, I'm in real estate now." Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, or yeah, sell, yeah selling that or uh, real estate or insurance. Yeah, we, we can find a place for you. Exactly. We can find a place for you. But bottom line, he's back. I uh, definitely think that changes the uh, prognosis yes. of the next handful of weeks. We'll be Get getting done. games here in a little bit. Uh, we'll have the opportunity to adjust uh, this week's pick. I don't want to go start playing the game of adjusting picks all the way down the rest of the season at this point, with the exception of maybe week four. I think we can address that one based on the Aaron. Yeah, Rodgers. that. I, I I think that's a win for us. You know, I think so too. We'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about weeks two and four. But let's uh, let's talk about week one, um, that game. And so uh, I want to get into uh, positives, some negatives and uh, what we think we learned, you know, not only from our game, but really from the, the rest of the league. So, Brian, I'll start with you. The Chiefs lost 21-20 uh, to the Lions at home and the banner raising day last Thursday, you know, well uh, documented at this point and uh, everybody's let us hear about it for, for God's sake. So what, uh, what would you say are the positives that you got out of that game from a Kansas city standpoint? There's a tale of two halves, right? The first half, especially that second quarter, it was the chiefs uh, rhythm and the chiefs performance that we're used to seeing uh, mm -hmm. completing the passes, moving the ball efficiently, high, the fast offense. It was moving just fine. That was what I remember. I remember thinking like, Hey, we're back. Here we go. This is going to be fun and moving the ball and scoring the, like, like we do. And that was without Travis Kelsey on Chelsea. the field. And that was obviously like a, a presence that we lost there. So, um, so the first half I remember thinking like, okay, yeah, this feels like what I'm used to watching. And then we got to the second half and that kind of fell apart there. Uh, there were some, there were some good moments there. So uh, yeah, uh, the positives are we were right there. We still have the system that works. We still have the performance that works. We still have like the the motive, the vibe, or if you want to call it that. Uh, we just got to get it done. There, I mean, lest for a few like uh, uh, kind of one on one mistakes. Like obviously, I'm not going to belabor the point or uh, pile on over here. But there's like football one on one wide receiver catching <laughs> mistakes that need to be fixed, which I know can be fixed uh, very easily because we're able, elite level athletes. So we'll get there. So we were right there take that home and we got ourselves a W. So, you know, we were right there at all time. I was thought even in, going to the fourth quarter, I'm like, I feel like we're going to pull this out. We're always in control. And then the last six minutes or whatever it was, it was just like, Whoa, what is this? And then here we are. We are. zero and one. Yeah. What do you think, Dwayne? What I was positives. thinking is I, the positives. Okay. The positives, like, like Brian said, the first half was awesome. I, I, I was so proud of the bell gozer catching that touchdown. I, I was very hyped up with uh, the deep ball catches that uh, uh, Justin Watson made. And I think that that is something that we need to see more of. Rashi Rice did a real good job. Uh, there was only one pass thrown to Justin Ross, but he caught it. So that was a, that was a plus. Um, we all know the negatives, but I believe that uh, the fuel for fire, the positive is that we're coming back fully loaded to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. And, you know, we might be wrong on our picks on that one, but that's a great thing. I, I, I want to be wrong. Yeah, you guys might be. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I picked the Chiefs in that one at the beginning. No, so he, here's the here's the positive for me. I want to start by saying I didn't watch any of the first half. My really? my wife bought us tickets to go see Eliza Schlesinger. Uh, awesome, awesome comedy show. She's a rock really? rocker, by the way. Yeah. Wow. So wow. We went, so we went and saw we went and saw that. She bought those a while ago. I wasn't bailing on that. Uh, partially because I really wanted to see that show. Anyway, we caught the entire second half. And so I saw some of the most poorly executed route running, just everything. It, it was just, it was just a bad game. It was a bad game and they lost by one. They lost by one. 
They lost by one, and it was because Kadarius Tony threw a pick six. That's it. Patrick that Mahomes did it. not throw a pick six. Kadarius Tony threw a pick six, and and that was it. And and I I have no ill will against Kadarius Tony. The dude not was at all. Like, no. winning the Super Bowl. Phenomenal. We it's all have bad days. Yes. We, we all have bad days. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I I didn't watch the all 22, mainly because this is just one of those like burn the tape games for me. But I, I haven't looked at the all 22, but supposedly MVS was open a lot down the field. Um, he was. All of this. All of and this. He, the, and he was awesome in the first in the first yeah. uh, quarter. In and, the, in the, in the, I mean, he caught that ball in between two defenders. That was amazing. Exactly. But the the defense the defense stepped up, you know, and and, and it's just the the positive was uh, you played about as bad of a half of football as you possibly can, and rather than getting blown out the way the New York Giants did, the way the <laughs> Cincinnati Bengals did, they played two they, bad halves. The way, yeah, exactly. The way, uh, God, who else got blown out really bad? The Pittsburgh Steelers, y- you lost by one, by one, by one two, to two, a good team. To, to a, a good, good team, up and, a good to a, up and coming team. To a good team who was hungry, who was about as dangerous offensively last year as you could possibly be. I mean, there were plenty of silver linings. Biggest negative for me, leaving this on the football field, Justin Ross not playing a bigger role. That was kind of a negative. But really, the biggest negative, I mean, I was genuinely over that game by the time that final whistle was blown. I did not care going forward on that fourth and 25. Cause to me, that was Andy Reed just saying like, dude, either just go or let's go home. You know, that was, that was a coaching staff just throwing their hands up saying like, I don't know, whatever you guys want to do, you aren't going to catch the ball. You're not going to run the play. You're not going to do any of this stuff. So we're just going to go for it. That's the, exactly. big, the, the biggest negative to me was everything after that. And it was watching every, you know, chiefs fan analyst, people that do the same th- thing as us pulling out their receipts from, you should have signed Chris Jones. We should have gotten a wide receiver one. We should have done all of this. I'm like, you guys are being insufferable, just jerks right now. Just stop it. Yeah. You know, nobody cares. You know, nobody cares <laughs> that, that yes, it probably did make the difference, but this is one. Game. I, I spent three or four days battling people that were insufferable jerks. And I was like, you know what? No, we have a good wide receiver core. It's just exactly. that exactly. it was all, it was all, I agree with what Andy Reid said. Big Red said it best. He pushed Tony out there and gave him a bigger role than he should have because Tony has missed all of the preseason. So in the first half, if, you're, if your deal was working with Rice, Watson, and MVS, stick with the girl that you brought to the dance instead of going over and grabbing another girl because it's always going to turn out bad for you. I'm just saying. Well, and I don't even know that I don't know that they took a girl to the dance. I think they showed up to the keg party, picked up one, and then tried to pick up her friend. That doesn't go over well. <laughs> no, it doesn't. That, no, that it doesn't, doesn't go over well. I haven't gotten myself into that a lot, but I have gotten into it before, and that does not go over. Yeah, it doesn't well. play out very well, does it? We have a lot of messes <laughs> to clean up there. But you definitely brought up another negative. I mean, the preseason, we we clearly learned nothing in the preseason on the offensive side of the ball. And and I don't think that was just our offense. I think that was half the league. Like half the league just wasn't ready to play offensively. And that's oh. typically a thing where the defenses look look better the first you know week or two of the season just based on that. But Cincinnati wasn't ready to play. Pittsburgh wasn't ready to play. The Giants weren't ready to play. We weren't ready to play. But oh, our but version. There was like two or three like short like check down kind of things that would be a Kelsey 100% guarantee thing that he just wasn't on the field for. And that was one of the first downs that would have gotten us to where we needed to go. It's just back to, back to Kelsey. Get him back out there. All reliable as I like to call him when I'm watching. I'm like, all reliable. There he is. And That's right. Shake um, and bake. Shake <laughs> and bake. And there, there was a, there was, there was a Tony throw. I remember sitting there watching it. It, it was, it was my wife and I, and then two of her friends. And there was one where he, uh, he caught it. He should have caught a ball for a first down. I'm like, that might've been a touchdown. I mean, he had, he had my right. you know, and, and it was and, like how the Super Bowl, whenever uh, Mahomes was throwing these amazing, uh, these incomplete passes that were hitting dudes in the face. <laughs> like, Whoa, this is, exactly. this is an amazing exactly. inc- incomplete pass here, dude. <laughs> exactly. And, and so that's it. That game was one of three games that I've watched in the Mahomes era. That was just horribly hard to watch. And, and you know what else was hard to watch, Josh and Brian? It, 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 
it was it me or did it seem like our offense played slow? Uh, they did. Oh. They, they were oh. they were just they were just off. I thought they were out of sync. Yeah, out of sync came to mind. I, I was like, we're out of sync. This is, doesn't seem as tight as I'm used to seeing. Um, everyone seemed kind of out of sync a little bit. I don't know what that means. If the routes, I, I don't know what the routes are. I don't know what the like how it looks or anything. But it wasn't as polished as I think we're used to watching. So yeah, maybe this getting a little the cobwebs out of there a little bit. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I felt that too. But again, great team. Again, the Lions, you know, tip fine. the hat to them. Yep, tip but of the hat. They Save had the flavor. A, they, had the flavor. A, they had to get a pick six. They had to get a fake punt, and they won by one. Savor the wow. flavor. <laughs> so, so that's that. So, I think the the real question that I want to that I just want to ask is, uh, and I'll start with Brian. What do you think the Chiefs learned, and what do you think we learned about the rest of the NFL? You can answer answer both of those, and we'll go around the room. Like, what did we learn from that game in the, week one? Well, we got to get tight. I think uh, back to what Dwayne was talking about there, the watching the, the second quarter, everything felt like it was the normal machine that we're used to watching. And then we get to the second half and things felt off. It felt out of sync, felt just the plays that we're, that we're used to seeing were not being made. And um, so we learned like uh, perhaps uh, I were waiting for the defense to gel. I'm like, okay, so is the, the, the offense need to gel a little bit more? Of course, Kelsey's out of it. We've talked about that. Also, uh, we learned that maybe, just maybe, that the, the Detroit Lions spent their money on the secondary, and maybe it was causing some problems there that we just couldn't see because the cameras were focused over here and over here. Maybe it was just causing a little bit more of a ruckus that, uh, you know, the money that they spent on that, maybe it was doing what, what it was intended to do. And perhaps the Detroit Lions secondary defense is something that we need to be, be paying attention to because maybe they got something going on over there that is causing some disruptions uh, that we need to pay some respect to. So, um, so get back in sync, respect that secondary from Detroit and, uh, get Chris Jones in there, hit somebody and Kelsey make some grabs. Yeah. I, I hope, I hope Chris Jones can, I, I hope he doesn't come out rusty, uh, this week. Cause he's taking a lot of time off and smoking cigars and swimming in the pool. I don't know if he's as in shape as he says, quote unquote, he is, but one thing's for certain and two things for sure we are definitely going to see. But I thought that as a positive, uh, Brian and Josh, I thought the defense played extremely well without. Them. Yeah. So the thing, the things that I think we possibly learned about the chiefs, the, uh, the defense might be, you know, legitimately taking a step. Um, uh, the offense needs to not take things for granted. I think that's something that was definitely learned. Uh, I think that we as fans learn that we just really do need to expect that there's going to be one really hard game to watch every single season because these guys are a bunch of humans. Um, other things that I think we learned across the league, I, I genuinely think that we learned that the uh, conference, uh, the conference alignment, there might be more parity than we like to think. You know, all this, this whole thing is that the, uh, the AFC is going to boat race the NFC. The two scariest looking teams are the Cowboys and the 49ers. They, they seem Literally. to have it going on both sides of the, uh, of the ball. They uh, really did. Yeah. I think we, I think we also learned that the uh, bears truly suck that the uh, Packers actually can develop quarterbacks. Um, oh Jordan, Jordan love looked kind of decent. But net, like he looked so comfortable and yeah. he looked like he's been doing it a long time. I'm like, okay, looks like Green Bay has won the bet so far with the with the Aaron Rodgers trade. Uh, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, Anthony Richardson, if you're looking at early returns, might be the uh, the rookie quarterback to ride. He didn't look he didn't look great, but he looked like he actually had some tools to work with. And the the Colts might be put together a little bit better than we thought they they were. And uh, if you want to go by what Nick Wright and uh, First Things First were preaching earlier today, uh, the uh, Bills and Josh Allen might not be very good. <laughs> That's uh, they, they. You uh, know, I have been I have been screaming that all off season, Josh and Brian. I was like, I am willing to bet that the Bills are going to take a big step back. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I think they're a oh, nine and eighteen. Whoa, okay, and that's crazy. Yeah, that is wild. That's a wild. Oh, yeah. I'm not. I'm not sure that I can go that far, but uh, you know, last night was a good step in that direction. I, I definitely have to acknowledge that. I definitely have to acknowledge that they did not. 
have a good showing um all right my, tanya and i my wife and i were watching that and uh she was just like i remember her saying this she's from ukraine and she's developed a, a love of nfl you know football for over the last 13 years and it took some time and now here we are now and now it's funny to watch her now uh, watch uh josh allen throw uh interceptions and hear her on the couch going who's he throwing to why are you yeah. throwing it like wow you've come a long ways haven't you well, there you are. who is he throwing uh, to i don't know who's throwing to that's <laughs> a great question that's a great question <laughs> all right so i think we can all agree um turn the page on week one you know whatever yep. game's over right. the lions oh, won well. they won fair and gladly square. gladly right. turn the play page well. play Shake well it off. so week two the chiefs play the jacksonville jaguars this is the big arrowhead kingdom invasion game Thankfully, this game's at noon and the Florida heat on week two. Most ridiculous scheduling that the NFL could possibly do. They needed to flip-flop this one in the Green Bay game. Have yes. Jacksonville be the first Sunday in uh, December. Have the uh, Packers host the Chiefs the uh, first, Sunday first Sunday in September. Sunday. And everybody would have been great. But here we go. Nobody asked me how to put the schedule together, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> nobody asked you, Josh. Yeah, nobody, nobody asked should you have. Nobody asked me. So, uh, Dwayne, what are your keys to victory for the Chiefs this uh, Sunday? Key number one, do not make Kadarius Tony wide receiver one. Host him in because I think he's 17 in the mind, uh, even though he's like 24, 25. I, I think he's a teenager in the brain. So, host him easy. Focus on MBS. MBS got open many times and I hope that they focus on him and focus on Justin Ross and focus on Rice and, and Justin Watts. And once you get up a score or two, then start throwing to Kadarius Tony and build his confidence up. But definitely catch the ball. And I think that's going to happen because like Brian said, the check down with uh, Kelsey is there so shake and bake is back and it's hard it's hard to beat shake and bake defense just just do what you've been doing uh chris jones should be he should be fine even if he doesn't look his best the defense is clicking enough to where they could kind of cover up some of his his rust from the preseason and, you know, I don't look for him to get back to true form until week four. Week four, he, he's he's going to be a monster against that line. Yep, there's uh, there's being in shape and there's uh, being able to handle two a days in shape. You know, you're you're gonna yes. you're gonna throw up that first day. Brian, what are your keys to victory? You reminded me of what Eli Manning said with uh, was it the Jets with a, I forget the, the running back's yeah. name, but he ran he ran like uh, in the five their five air line and was running down the heel. He had like got a lot of space. And he got to like the 16 yard line. And he got tackled. And Eli Manning's like, oh, he's out of shape. He's out of shape. He needs to get that to yes. the end zone because he had a lot of space, but the defender caught him. That was pretty small. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a conditioning thing, right? Not, not that I am casting like that. I could do it. I cannot. No, no, no. But it's just like, we're, watching. Can I? I don't, I don't think we're that's throwing that's rocks in glass houses. We're comparing, we're, we're comparing this individual compared to other running backs. It's not, I'm not comparing to my other running backs. So that's what we're doing. Uh, but yes, uh, the keys of the game, uh, what Dwayne was talking about, shake and bake Kelsey's in the game. Uh, that's going to change the, the, the dynamic, uh, back to what, hopefully what we're used to. Um, defense keep doing what you're doing. I was pleasantly surprised because normally we wait for the defense to gel a little bit. So, um, hopefully they continue kind of what they're doing right now and putting the stops in the ball. Um, you know, there, uh, gosh, we're talking about like, actually I was hoping for Pacheco to have a big game, but I don't know. Was it that Edwards Alaire have a bigger game than Pacheco in the last one, but it's, the goal was to establish a run game. I feel like we were that, what I feel like that was kind of what the thing we were going after there because we wanted to like spread the defense a little bit more there. So, but now with, uh, Kelsey in the game there. We can, we can do some more uh, air, air raids there. Um, so yeah, spread that defense a little bit more, uh, spread their defense and uh, yeah, just get uh, repeat the second quarter for all four quarters, basically, if we can pull that off. So, um, but yeah, I'll be looking forward to, I'll be, I'll be interested, interested to see what they do with Kadarius Tony. Um, you know, one bad game, one situation like that, I mean, does not make a career. Obviously he's a very talented individual has done a lot of great things. So we want to see more of that. I have, and hopefully he gets the, I mean, I assume like 
I, I think someone said they delete he deleted his Twitter or something. I don't know. Yeah, I, that's that's when I that's when I felt a little sorry for him. I was like, okay, he's 17, 18, maybe nineteen in the brain. But then he brought it back out to make fun of the Giants. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he but he logged back on to talk talk shit to the talk crap to the Giants. So right. at, at that at that being said, hopefully, maybe maybe this embarrassment. He might be the guy that you know? turns up the juice. Yeah, no what? To the where we like, oh my God, Kadarius Tony, what way to you? What way did you redeem yourself? Because that guy might come out and he might do some incredible stuff. Because the way he bends his body is like no other receiver I've seen. Like he's almost like Plastic Man. He's like bending, churning, doing some weird things. I'm like, wow, you got some unique joints there. <laughs> Maybe yeah. that's, I think he might be onto something there. He might be the type like, who's like, look, okay, I, I'm ready to uh, redemption arc, ready to go. And I want to rub some noses into who was talking the biggest amount of ish on me. I'm ready to go. And maybe that is what will happen. Um, but of course, if you're the coach, just like, okay, look, we have to go by what the plan is. And also like, uh, you know, a lot of good production out there, a lot of good receivers. So we'll work you into it. Uh, it's almost like when, was it Sky Moore who, who dropped the punt? Uh, a few years ago again was it bills or whatever no but they... it was a it was the uh colts yeah, oh, the colts, yeah. oh wow what a pain last year's miss. clunker oh i was yeah. at that game that was horrible yeah but they but they put him back in for the afc championship game and look what happened right wasn't like they, right. they, they, they like i remember him talking about that in an interview like he obviously felt like a terrible like he let the whole everyone down and and obviously the vote of confidence was not quite there for him, but there he is, the big return on the AFC Championship game. He's like, they put me back in. He's ready to go. And boy, did he deliver. So uh, let's see what happens. I feel like uh, I feel like these dudes get motivated by stuff like that. So we'll see what happens. Uh, so Brian, you asked the question: Who had the bigger uh, running gate running day? Um, Vlad Edwards Hilaire had six carries for twenty two yards. Isaiah Pacheco had eight for twenty three. Mm. Um, so I guess you tell me which one of those was bigger. And uh, Patrick Mahomes was actually the leading rusher with uh, six <laughs> yes, he was. for 45 yards, which is the worst indication for your uh, running game that you can possibly get. That's very so. true. That's very true. So, but I do like that he has that, but I also freak out whenever he crosses the line of scrimmage. I'm like, oh my God, please don't hurt him. <laughs> so. Yeah. But no, my keys to victory are exactly what you guys are saying. Just polished execution. Just look like you played football before. That's really it. Yeah. Yeah. More well, of the same what we're used to, quarter. second quarter. Yeah. All right, so uh, score predictions. Brian, what are you taking for a score prediction? And keep in mind, when we uh, when we looked at this, when we when we looked at this, you picked the loss this week. So what I, is your score prediction for the week? I picked the loss this week? I thought the Jets was my first loss. All right. No. Oh, my gosh. No. I picked the oh win. You guys Brian, both picked the loss. <laughs> and Josh is uh, Josh is not going to let us forget that. He and no. you did, did say that, and we said it with so much confidence. We said it with our chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I was predicting a Lions win with authority. Me too. So that changes my attitude quite a bit here, Josh. So if I may backtrack, if I may take my words back, put them back in my mouth. whatever you want. <laughs> humbly, humbly come to you humbly and say, no, I think the Chiefs win because they got – they got some fire and they got some uh they got some pain to bring down. We got Kelsey in there and we got we're doing I think the Chiefs win this one now. Uh humbly retract my earlier prediction um after watching the last game. So I think Chiefs win. I'm gonna go uh 28-21. All right. We're gonna call that a Chiefs flop. Uh <laughs> so Brian with the Chiefs flop, uh 28 with the Chiefs flop, because I'm gonna eat a lot of crow here. Because I thought that Doug Peterson Reed Jr. is gonna pull this one off by a touchdown. I got the Chiefs beating the Jacksonville Jaguars by 10. I got 31 to 21. Okay. All right. I'm gonna stick with my win. I'm gonna go uh 31 28. I think uh Trevor Lawrence is gonna gonna pull off some uh some scoring. Some I do scores. I do want to look at what the line is for this game. <laughs> So let's see here. The uh, line on this game to see if I'm calling for the spread. Okay. So I've got that as a push because it's got KC favored by three. So 
All right. Well, there you go. So, so that's good right there. Um, yeah, I think we're, I think we're aligned And uh, so let's get into the final takes slash um, th- this is just going to be a college football talk, right? I mean, yeah, right. Let's do it. All right. Um, we're going to let Dwayne go last. Cause I feel like he's got the most to talk about here. So uh, Brian, do you, do you want to go or you want to push this to me? Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll go first. Sure. Uh, KU two and zero after a win against Illinois and um Next up is BYU, and it's a lot of fun to – I mean, I, I just got to tell you, I know it's not the level of, say, Texas, Alabama, or Colorado, what we got going on over there, uh, but I got to tell you, it's a lot of fun to have that kind of at, uh, that kind of atmosphere and that kind of uh, – just the the excitement around town with, um, with, with having your football team doing really well and uh, delivering uh, delivering the some Ws for you. So, uh, obviously, I'm always a believer, uh, understanding what the, what the mountain to climb is. But I gotta say, I'm I'm all about Rock Chalk Jayhawk, and let's see how they do against BYU. And then, you know, uh, we have Jalen Daniels. That's who's... a win. That's a win. I'm I'm riding with Rock Chalk Rock Chalk Jayhawk on that one. BYU right. has no fire for this. All yeah. right, that's why that's what I like. To, yeah, I, that's what I, I'm thinking too. Jalen Daniels is uh, really when he's healthy, when he's not harmed, when he's not hurt, uh, he's doing this thing. Um, we got Jason Bean, who's very adequate. Uh, he's more than adequate. He's a very capable uh, uh, backup quarterback to what Jalen Daniels does. He's also extremely fast. And um, yeah, so we will keep on writing that. So I'm excited to see what the next game for uh, KU is. Uh, Josh, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going to say uh, I'm also excited to see KU playing well. And like pretty much the rest of the country, I am definitely noticing what Coach Prime has going on in Colorado. We are seeing uh, the result of this new era of college football where the transfer portal is effectively creating free agency in college football. But I have to admit, um, I got a lot of joy watching Nebraska lose. I don't like Nebraska, never have, never been a fan. Just uh, I, I enjoyed that probably more than I should. Um, so there's a, there's some, there's some real sports hate there. Bill Simmons, a big writer for ESPN. And then now is a site, the ringer. He ran the Grantland site. He's always been a favorite, favorite writer of mine. He always had this, uh, this piece where we talk about sports hate and he's like, sports hate is different from real hate. He's like, I sports hate Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, but I felt bad when I heard that he had a, an illness. Um, I sports hate Peyton Manning, but, you know, I like watching him on TV. Uh, I sports hate the Denver Broncos. I sports hate the St. Louis Cardinals. I sports hate the Nebraska Cornhuskers, and I know that I'm isolating myself away from a lot of other Chiefs fans, but that's how I feel about it, and I don't care. <laughs> I rewatched the – uh... you, Josh. I, 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 I don't dig the Cornhuskers at all. I'm not a big OU fan, and and uh, I I like Rock Chalk Jayhawk, and I like K State. So I guess the Chiefs Kingdom will accept me for that because I like K State, and and yeah. But I'm I'm not big on OU, and um, yeah. they've snagged some of the bet their best players from the great state of Texas, and uh, so my take is I, I I don't know who who my team UT Texas Longhorns are playing this this week, but I hope that Quinn Ewers can uh, capitalize off of this win over Bama, establish a lot of, uh, of confidence. I like what, uh, what, what Stark is doing down there on the 48th in Austin, Texas. And I am, I am always go horns, go horns, but I am an honorary bandwagon fan for the Colorado Buffs. I promise you, I have never ever been a Colorado Buffs fan. I will go on record and say that. Uh, they've had some good players with Eric B. and me. I, he was a lot of fun to watch. I mean, he, was, he, he was, but this thing that Coach Prime is doing is nothing short of magic. It feels like they will be in the playoffs and they're going to be in the national championship picture at the end of this game. Shadur Sanders, I honestly thought that he was not a good quarterback at Jackson State. And uh, my my alma mater, uh, Prairie View A&M University, played him, and he didn't look good in the SWAC championship. But Travis Hunter won that game against him. But he threw, like, three interceptions. And he just – I was thinking, no way, this guy is not that type of quarterback. But as his dad eloquently puts it, 
Shador is him. So Shador Sanders now, I believe that he has placed himself on the same pedestal with Caleb Williams. And that is phenomenal to me because before this season, I wouldn't even put Shadur Sanders in the same sentence with Caleb Williams. But what Shadur is doing and and the play on both sides with uh, Travis Hunter as wide receiver uh, and cornerback, that guy looks like baby Deion Sanders, literally. I think Deion wished that that was his son for real, you know, because he's like, yeah, yeah, that's my son. I'm like, I bet he is. And I think that <laughs> I, I think that Colorado – if they're definitely going to be in the playoffs this year, I feel like they're going to go 11 and one. I think they're going to upset USC, but somebody that's not supposed to beat them are going to beat them one game. But I, I feel like they're they're going to they're going to be it. I feel like Florida State is for real. I never thought Florida State, but the Seminoles, no blooded, they are back. They are back and they are kicking butt and taking names later. And they got they made LSU look bad and and they won against somebody this past weekend. I can't even uh, think of who. I didn't watch that game, but uh, yeah, I, I I my eyes are on Texas. The eyes of Texas are upon me. My eyes are on that, and uh, my 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 eyes are uh, definitely on Colorado Buffs and. I, I'm going to be watching a lot of USC. I, I have a cousin that played for USC. Uh, he was the starting tailback in the late 80s, Aaron Emanuel. Uh, mm-hmm. He played with Rodney Peet, and he's my first cousin. And I call him and tease him all the time. And he's been talking cash trash. He's been saying, I can't wait till week four when we shut down all of that Colorado buff stuff. He was like, he thinks USC, and like, and as he should, he's a Trojan for life. So he thinks that they're going to, he, he don't even think it's going to be close. So I'm like, uh-uh, do not say that. You're talking Coach Pride. I mean, don't say it. Mm-hmm. I know uh, Lane Kiffman is a great coach, but is he better than Coach Prime? We will see. <laughs> is he better at bulletin board material? Because I don't think anybody is. Uh, so I have an answer and a correction here real quick. So for week three, Texas is hosting Wyoming. Um, that's going to be a small <laughs> funeral right there. Uh, mm-hmm. Brian, actually, BYU and KU was week four. Week three, they play in Nevada, so they will be out west playing Nevada. Mm-hmm. All right, that Bye. weather. I don't. I don't like that weather for for the Jayhawks. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. But in in any event, we got a big weekend of uh, college football. football. We got a. Uh, Football all the time. Heck yeah. Yep, we got uh I got my Premier League coming back after the international break. They're they're playing in the Euros right now. So I get to watch right. uh some actual soccer Saturday morning. And so yeah, I think we're gonna I re-watched, have a good week and then I rewatched the uh, Coach Prime when he first met the players at Buff uh Buffalo. I rewatched that today. It was really that was really entertaining in my Oh, eyes. that was because the like way he came in there, he came in there like Brian, he came in there like a hostile takeover. Okay. If you're ready to transfer, transfer, because your quarterback is Shadur Sanders. And they put the camera right on their current quarterback, and he had that look like, screw it, man. I, 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 I'm I, leaving this meeting and, and, and getting in the transfer portal now, you know? Yeah. Oh, and the way he speaks, like the way he like delivers his message, it's almost like a football preacher of some kind. It's yes, like, doesn't, doesn't he sound like a pastor or something? Yeah, he's like, <laughs> I'm coming. Look, we're doing this. We're not doing this way no more. We're not doing that. We're doing like this. I'm coming. Look, we're gonna be like this, and we're like that, and we're doing that because I'm coming. And like he has like a refrain, like this is like a like a pastor of some kind. This is awesome. Literally, he's reading the Psalms up there. Yeah, basically. <laughs> and, and, and in honor of him, we can't say the bull beep. We got to say bull jump, like he says yeah, now. There you go. All yeah. that bull jump. <laughs> All that bull jump. Yep, yep, yep. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we will see you next week, recapping another week of uh, football and uh, previewing one after that as well and until then go chiefs, chiefs. <laughs>